Welcome back in the Cheapo Spotlight, the Zeist 282 Auto Ranging Digital Multimeter. 20,000 counts of auto ranging goodness. Let's take a look. Purchased via AliExpress for a whopping 20 bucks Canadian. Yeah, this is definitely in the Cheapo zone. It ships in a brown vanilla style box. Tells you you've got a multimeter. Hey, what more do we need? At least it's in a box. In the box, you're getting a set of leads, test leads and a thermal couple. Now the test leads are, let's just call them adequate. Nothing to get too excited about. Um, they have a little bit of that cheesy, cheap feeling, but um, eh, I guess it'll do the job. We have a thousand volt Cat 3 10 amp rating on there, but once again, take that with a grain of salt. Shroud itself, fairly long, fairly decent, and it seems to stick in the meter nice and snug. That thermocouple, because yes, it does do temperature. It's just your standard input jack style thermoprobe. The digital manual, well, not digital manual, but the multimeter manual itself, actually uh, a little better than your norm pamphlet that comes with most cheapos today. Here we go, 20,000 counts, bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, right from the get go. Uh, yeah, it's got all of our ranges here, has a little bit of, uh, specs specifications all in all pretty decent english isn't bad and hey not too bad for a cheapie i gotta say right from the get-go yeah it definitely looks flukish i don't think that's a fluke no it's kind of resembling the 17b among others definitely has that fluke look in fact if this was in a yellow holster at first glance you might just think you're holding one of the big boys that being said it does have a pretty decent heft about it um feels semi-quality i mean for a 20 dollar digital multimeter um yeah it doesn't feel bad at all certainly it's got some weight to it some girth and i think this could definitely withstand a few bumps has those nice input holders on the back so if you want to store your jacks easy breezy a beautiful multimeter yeah starting off at the nine o'clock position for the off volts ac and frequency volts DC, millivolts, AC DC, and temperature. Resistance, capacitance, diode, and continuity. Frequency and duty cycle. High current amps, AC DC. Milliamps, AC DC. Microamps, AC DC. Finally, non-contact voltage detection or volt alert. Starting on the left, we have our select switch to switch between ranges that have more than one input. We have our hold button, which also doubles as the backlight. Here is our range selection, our rel mode, our frequency and duty cycle select. And finally, we have a peak feature, which we'll look at shortly. On the left-hand side for high current, we have a 10 amp input, followed by a milliamp and microamp. And this is rated at 200 milliamps. Finally, we have our commenter input. And on the far right, we have our temperature, frequency, resistance, voltage, and capacitance. Let's turn that meter on, shall we? And right away we are in volts AC and look at that yeah we have a dual display hey not bad for a cheapo telling us we are in true RMS mode there is our frequency at the top and of course those nice digits now remember this is a 20,000 count meter so we do have higher resolution than normal in fact I'm pretty sure suffice to say this is the cheapest 20,000 count multimeter currently available we can enable that backlight simply by holding down on the feet on the backlight itself and there you go now we do have a lot of bleeding here on the left where that led is emitting the uh, light a little too much bleeding it's not as bad in person um as it's showing up on the camera but still a little bit unnecessary bleeding going on and yeah there you have it a really short dismal what was that 20 seconds tops why 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 don't they let us turn it off when we're darn well ready to turn it off yeah i gotta say i don't know what it is but i'm getting a thing for green multimeters it just looks so mm, sweet sweet okay so it's cheap it's got a 20,000 count dual display and it even has a peak function whoa all this for 20 bucks i don't know let's see how good it is okay i'm gonna lose that plastic i know i have a tendency sometimes to leave the plastic on but let's just 
Oh, okay, well, wow. Fooled me, huh? All right, so that plastic just protected the uh, top of the display. All right, now we're gonna start things off with a voltage test, DC accuracy. Let's see how good it is. Sitting now with our DC accuracy and look at that, 249.92 millivolts for the key site. While our Z282 is sitting there over limit and we are in millivolt range. Now, according to the manual, it should be able to pick this up, but it's supposed to start at 200 millivolts. But uh, for whatever reason, it is showing us as over limit. So I'm gonna take it out of millivolts and put it into standard volts. And there we go now, 249.9. So fairly close to the key site. Okay, we're gonna switch things over now. We should be looking at 2.50 volts. And I'm gonna take the key site out of millivolt mode. 2.5032 ish for the key site, 2.49 for the 282Z. All in all, fairly close. Just a little bit of, uh, mm, I don't know, shake and bake on the Z for not being able to pull up that 250 millivolts whilst in millivolt range. Interesting. DC voltage showdown. I've got the key site U1282A. Lined up with the Z282 and the Mater, Meter K MK01A. Wow, how do they name some of these things? Um, by the way, big shout out to Keysight. Keysight um, graciously provided me to this UT1282A, and I will be doing a review on that at the end of the summer. Um, great big shout out to Keysight. Thanks so much for your support. Okay, here we are sitting now at one volt, one volt even according to the long way. And we've got 1.0115 for that high 60,000 count resolution key sight, 1.0109 for the 282, and 1.010 for the MK01A. All pretty well neck in neck. I'm gonna start that voltage increase. Here we go. Let's take it up to a whopping 3.74 volts, 3.7438 for the key sight, 3.74 and 3.741, look at that neck and neck, the meter K and the Zeiss 282. Hey, they're all pretty well neck and neck. Let's take it up, up and away. Let's try a whopping, oh, 10.98 volts. 10.93 for the key site, 10.92 for the 282 and 10.91 for the meter K. Well, all fairly, fairly close. I'm gonna take it right up to the max now. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. We should hit 30 volts. 32.19 volts maxed out. 32.021 for the key side. 32 spot on even for the Zeist. And 31.98 for the meter K. Look at that. Wow. Excellent, excellent stuff. So really, um, you know, in terms of overall DC accuracy, they are all fairly neck in. Okay, so we just zoomed in a little bit here. We're going to... Play with that voltage up and down a little bit. Just see if we can see any difference in terms of that bar graph. And yeah, I mean, really, it's a no-brainer here. That key site is much more um, responsive. Uh, there's some lag with that Zeist with the bar graph. Let's bring it down. Oh, let's try 17, 8.9 volts, 0.8 volts. I'll just go a little bit back and forth. Yeah. That, that Zeiss has an interesting bar graph. Um, the scaling is a little bit different than the key sight. Um, yeah, just a little bit harder to read and definitely not as responsive. So anyway, hey, they both have a scale. Gotta love it when these cheapo meters has a bar graph. Hey, don't quite as my Russian friends would say. Well, we're looking at high current right now, sitting at 2.6 amps. And so far the Zeiss is not having any problems in the high amp department. Okay, let's take it up, shall we? 3.4, 6.4, 6.44 amps, 6.45. And that uh, 10 second max 10 amp fused input on the 282, definitely getting some heat. Now we've got that high current alarm coming up on the Zeiss, good to see. 
All right, we'll bring it down now back to 7.6 volts. So excellent, we have a high current alarm on the 282. Always a bonus. And hey, nice and fast. I don't see any worries here as far as current goes. Let's check out milliamps. Milliamp mode is next, sitting at around 30 milliamps, showing up as 44 milliamps on the 282. All right, let's just bring it up. Now remember, we only have a 200 milliamp range here. 99 milliamps looking good so far. 140 milliamps showing up. Showing as 130 according to the long way. And let's just take it up to, oh, over limit now, 220 milliamps. Bring it down a knot. 190, 199. Yeah, so we are restricted by that 200 milliamp limit. But that being said, it does seem to work just fine. Quick resistance test now. Now this only has a uh, kind of a me sort of 20 mega ohm uh, range, so nothing uber fantastic, but uh, at least it's better than two. Yeah, so we're sitting at five mega ohm right now, fairly fairly close. Uh, let's bring it down one here, four mega ohm, looking good. Let's try 100k. Fairly fast to range, and it seems to settle quite quickly. Let's do 110k. Not so bad. Let's try 300k. Yeah, so all in all, it seems to range fairly fast, and hey, I like it. We're going to try the lower resistance range. I've got a nice 8.25 ohm metal clad resistor here. And let's first roll out the leads, because always a good idea when you're measuring low resistance. Let's see if we have any resistance on those leads. So there we go, we have a bit of resistance, 0.24 ohm. I'm gonna hit the rel button, and let's try it again. Oh, that's not good. Okay, let's try that one more time. So there's our resistance on the leads, hitting the rel button should negate that. Let's try it again. Okay, so we have a defective rel feature on the ZEIS-282. That's too bad. Mm. Yeah, so... Uh, darn, darn. You were doing so good up until now. Dish. Okay, so we'll have to just do the math. I have an 8.25 ohm resistor. Looking at about 0.25, so let's see if we can get this in the range. Yeah, so if we subtract that uh, resistance in the leads, it would bring us to about 8.25 ohm. So too bad that rel feature doesn't work, but uh, meter at least seems to be accurate. Capacitance is next. Now this has a meager 2000 microfarad or 2 millifarad capacitance threshold. Wow, just not enough in today's day and age, at least not as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, besides the point, let's see how it does. Okay, 1000 microfarad right here. Let's see how quickly. All right, it is thinking, it is thinking. 1000 microfarad, it's not that much. There we are. Just under and that should be fine. Well, you know what? When in Rome, yeah, let's get out one of these bigger caps and just for the fun of it, see if it can do any better than it's reading. Okay, I've got a 10,000 microfarad, 10 millifarad cap here. Hey, why not? Let's hook it up and bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. It is thinking. It's in millifarad range. Wow, hey, look at that 9.6 millifarad. Oh, five times better than spec. Works for me. Loving it, loving it, love it when these cheapos pull out these stops. Good stuff. Well, you know what? Hey, when you're on a roll, you just keep on rolling. Let's try this big boy. Yeah, 47 millifarad, 47,000 microfarad. Here we go. Whoops, yeah, here we go, all right. Okay, put it in like that. And Houston, we have liftoff. All right, we want to see 47 millifarad. Wouldn't that be sweet? Wouldn't that be so sweet? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh, ho, 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 yeah. Wow, one of these days. Okay, I have a smile on my face. 
Can you see that smile? I'm happy. I'm happy. Look at that good stuff. Well, you know, you know what's gonna happen, right? We're gonna pull out that hundred millifarad. Big old electrolytic. And let's see if it can take the ultimate prize. Okay. Without further ado. Here we go. Three, two, one. It is thinking. Is it gonna be three for three? Come on, baby, steal my heart, steal my electrolytics, just, just take it away. Wow, 98.2, and that was really fast. So, hey, there you go. Super sweet, 100 millifarad, 100,000 microfarad capacitance. Not a problem for the Zeist 282. Good stuff. Diode mode is next. Here we go. Standard volt, uh, standard voltage, standard diode in front of me. Let's measure that. Forward voltage drop, shall we? 0.569, nice and fast, no problems there. Now we don't have that nice proverbial beep on a good diode. That would have just been ultra sweet, but it is what it is. Okay, let's check out these LEDs now. These are light emitting diodes. Starting off with the green LED. And it is so barely lit, you probably can't see that at home, but it is lit and we have that forward voltage bias. Bias, here we go, the yellow, same thing. And the red, no worries there. Over to the blue. Wow, like a Christmas tree. But we're not getting that forward voltage drop. Finally over to the white LED. And once again, it is lit. But we cannot see the forward voltage drop. So 5 out of 5 in terms of illumination in the LED nation. 3 to 5 for the voltage drop itself. So, hey, not so bad. Not so bad at all. 3.27 volts, the output voltage in diode mode. Right now we're looking at the ambient temperature inside the lab. And according to the Zeiss 282, we're sitting at 19 degrees Celsius. And the Pros Kit's ambient sensor is showing us as 18, so fairly close. Now this does also do Fahrenheit. Hit that select button. And 66 Fahrenheit showing for the Zeiss. 64 for the pros kit, fairly closed. Once again, it's an onboard sensor. If you want to measure temperature of, for instance, liquid or fire, then you can use that thermal sensor. Oh yeah, it's continuity time, my favorite time. Okie dokie, I've got the default test leads. Let's see how loud or not so loud the Zeist is. Three, two, one. Hey, it's latched, it's pretty loud. Hey, all in all for these default cheap test leads, that isn't so bad. Let's try the Probe Masters. Just like magic, here they are. Bada boom, bada bing. Yeah, it's really, really fast, latched. Now once it latches, it takes a wee bit just to lose and reset itself. But it is really fast. And you know what? That is really loud. Oh, nice, nice, nice. I like it. Eighty-two point five dBA, the maximum output volume in continuity. Right now we are sitting at one hundred and twenty volts AC. AC current here in the lab, and that is pretty well spot on. And look at that, we have that nice dual display. There are, there is the frequency indicator, 60 hertz. Excellent, excellent stuff. Now, another neat feature that this meter has that you don't see in too many cheapos, is something called the peak. It's right there. And basically it is, um, oh, how can we put it? AC signals are sinusoidal in nature. That's their shape, that's their waveform. And normal peak value is about 1.4-ish times the RMS value. Okay, what am I talking about? Well, for example, a standard sinusoidal wave at 120 volts RMS, you're looking at around a peak value of about 169 or so volts. Um, this is the RMS to peak ratio, often referred to as the crest factor. So we're not calling it crest, we're calling it peak today so what we want to do is we want to see or capture uh, these transients and you know what that happens literally in milliseconds so we need something faster 
and that's where the peak function comes in super handy. So basically, we can go from 120 volts RMS to, uh, well, we're going to find out. Here we are. Let's hit that peak function. And we're showing up at around 166 volts peak. This is because of the fast response time of about 100 and, I'm sorry, uh, more like 200 and 250 microseconds in peak mode. So with that speed, we can now see those transients. So by looking at that peak factor or crest here, we can pretty well uh, come to the conclusion that the AC line here is good. Very neat feature, something you don't see in a lot of cheapos. Ooh, I like it. Finally, we're gonna take a look at the EF mode, volt alert or non-contact voltage. It's all the same thing. Basically, it's gonna measure the um, output of the field to see whether or not we have any live current power going on here. So look at that, here we go. So I gotta tell you, it's not the most sensitive, that's for sure. Uh, we'll take a look to see what that uh, NCV filament looks like, if there's even a filament. Um, but you know, oh yeah, it's, it's, Definitely on the poor side in terms of NCV. Oh well. Cut! All right, here we are on the inside. And let's start off with the back of the case. And unfortunately, yeah, it is just um, those screws are going into plastic for them to take apart the unit. So that's too bad. But we do have that metal threaded insert here for the battery. So, oh well, you know. Looks like here we had a cutoff for what could have been speaker or piezo at some point, maybe in a different unit. All right, now let's take a look at that. And whoa, what do you see? Well, pretty hard to miss, isn't it? That is one big honking HRC fuse on the high current side of things. Whoa, you don't see that every day in a cheapo. Man, that just makes me shiver. Love it. Jack inputs themselves, unfortunately, are of that, you know, really thin tin variety. It's too bad we don't see something a little bit better. Do have those plastic standoffs though, so they're in there nice and solid, but I would have liked to see a little bit better quality in terms of the actual metal they used. Mm. Oh well, we have a tiny current shunt as well. Uh, once again, would have been nicer to see a bigger shunt here on the high current side. Speaking of high current, wow, check it out. One big honking HRC fuse that's 10 amp, 380 volt. I love it. On the milliamp side, we have our 200 milliamp, 200 milliamp, 200 milliamp rated fuse, as well as a little diode clamp. Moving up, here are the contacts for the battery. And this is one lonely PTC, and this is on the voltage side. Now we have our piezo speaker over here, crystal oscillator, and this is the main IC. Now we also see another IC, it's a dual IC. They are both cobbed. Wow, you don't see that all the time. By the way, the main IC is a Hikon, and right beside it here is our little EEP ROM, that is the ATM TC169. That is what is storing all that goodness for the Hikon. Now we don't see a separate or individual filament for the non-contact voltage. That's probably why it is so darn lame. It's built into the PCB itself and they are just never as accurate as a standalone filament. Ah, you can see it's a rebranded win high and we have our 2017 January 14th revision of the PCB. And remember, this is a brand new meter. It just came in, uh, well, probably about a month and a half ago now but uh, uh, slightly dated PCB. There you have it. All in all, what can I say? Nice and clean. There is no residue, no messy, gooey flux floating around. Pretty clean looking and all in all, not too shabby. Okay, gonna put everything back together and come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Zeist 282. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, this is a pretty good bang for the buck. I cannot complain. What can I say? You know, this thing did a lot of things right. I mean, wow, it was pretty darn accurate. It has a lot of bells and whistles. It even has a peak mode, which you don't see every day. No, it's not a fluke. And what you know what? Some people might get turned off because they're, maybe they think they're trying to pretend it's a fluke. Who cares? At the end of the day, it's a cheapo and it just performs 
great. It's got a lot of functionality. And you know what? Inside build quality isn't half bad. No, there's no big mobs, no big PTCs. But at the end of the day, once again, it's a cheapo. Keep it on the bench, keep it for low level homework. And you know what? You're gonna be just fine and you cannot complain about that big HRC. That is just a bonus. Hey, I can't complain about the 282. At the end of the day, you are getting a lot for your money. The Z282 gets a solid four out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.